and everybody always asks me this question, you know, like how are you going to get it in front of the jury and get the judge out of the picture? And I, I gave that to you a while back where it said like Blackstone's commentary and I always do volume, 20, uh, volume 3, chapter 23, section 378 of the trial by jury. And you never say jury trial, you want a trial by jury. And it says, but in both these instances, the jury may, if they think proper, take upon themselves to determine at their own hazard the complicated question of fact and law. And without either special verdict or special case may find a verdict absolutely either for the plaintiff or the defendant. So you just say, look, I just want a common law court of record trial. The common law is the law of this land. There is no higher law in this land. And I explained that to you folks a while back too. You actually Google the word land. Land means the people. And the common law court is the, the court of the people. So the land and the people, like I always say to people, you always seen that movie like Excalibur. It was like King Arthur, the king and the land are one. That's true. The king and the land, the king and the people are equal on equal footing. They're equal sovereigns. So that law has never been outlawed. So anytime anybody gives me any, any guff with this stuff, any kind of lawyer, any kind of judge, I just say to them, they say, well, we don't do it like that anymore. I said, okay, can you show me where you wrote down in the law? Because it's ridiculous, even if you do show me a, a statutory code. Can you just show me where it's outlawed? That a common law court of record has been outlawed in this country? So like I said, that's why I made the stylized, the, my summons, different than their summons, because their summons is United States District Court. Now, I'm not summing them to appear, so if you just fill out, if you just cut, copy, and, if you just use everything that they give you um, to move your case to the court, the people are going to show up in United States District Court. I don't want them to show up in the United States District Court. I want them to show up in the Federal District Court. Uh, we went down to the clerk of the court yesterday, and there was a man named Tim, and I don't remember the lady's name. And I asked him, I said, uh, what's a court of record? And I said, oh, well, that's where we keep the records. And it's like, okay, do you know under um, of course, Juris Secundum? I said, do you realize in uh, 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 Volume 25, Section 344, what does this say? And I showed the man. He said, uh, federal district courts are courts of record. I said, there you go. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah, this is a court of record. And he was like, okay. And I was like, okay, so what's a court of record? He said, well, that's where we keep the records. I said, is there any other way you want to describe this other than just this is where we keep the records? He's like, um, well, uh, I said, just, just, you know, just, just, um, uh, just, just, you know, just, just do your best. And this was the man who was the supervisor that brought out. So I said, Does it, is it not true that a court of record has the power to fine or imprison for contempt? And he's like, look at me. He's like, what? I said, um, it proceeds under the common law. It doesn't, not a statute or a code. He's like, look at me. It's in the tribunal's independent of the magistrate. He's like, yeah. I said, well, those are the four elements of a court of record. And sometimes it has a seal, sometimes it doesn't. I said, I got that from Billy Thornton. So I said to the man, I said, you don't really know what a court of record is, huh? It moves under the common law. I said, have you ever seen um, a caption stylized like this? Because if you read my caption, it's like uh, called Rudolf Lentz versus Robert Benton. But the versus is missing. Why did I take the word versus out? Because he's not a defendant. What is he? He's a wrongdoer. So like I said, it just says a man, colon, called Rudolf Lentz, the aggrieved party prosecutor. And there's a black line between my name and his name. And it just says Robert Benton, chief magistrate, chairman of the DHR, a governor, a public servant, a human, a wrongdoer. So what I'm trying to say is I'm not fighting this man. I'm not fighting the governor. I'm stating a, ca a claim that I've been done wrong, and I want compensation. Now, if this man wants to come to court and say that I'm filing a false claim, let him come to court and say I'm filing a false claim. I'm not fighting this man. I'm not bringing a controversy into this court. I'm not bringing a controversy into the public. I'm saying I want compensation because I believe I've been done wrong by, wrong by these people. Now, if they want to come and answer and say, well, Cole's wrong, I never did anything to him, I have no idea what he's talking about, let them come forward. But I'm not, it's not plaintiff versus defendant. No, it's just prosecutor versus wrongdoer. I'm just prosecuting, which just means I'm the one who's moving my claim. I'm the one pursuing, pursuing this matter. But uh, like I said, if they want to, um, I, I, like I said, I just use wrongdoer instead of defendant. I just don't want to make it seem like I'm fighting anybody. It's like, no, I'm not fighting them. Honestly, I hope they don't answer. If you don't answer, then I'm just going to get a nearly decent judgment against you because you failed to tell your attorney what to do. So you can't uh, ever come back and say, well, under the rules, the full judgment says that, uh, 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 you know, since no testimony was taken on the ultimate affirmation in open court, I could uh, um, come back again and I, and I could appeal. And then by that time, all the money I had is spent. And I was like, holy cow, here we go. 
So I don't want to do the full judgment with these people. I just want to do, a, like I said, a nearly set judgment against these people and uh, get on my day. And I said, and I made my, uh, everything you do to the court, I don't do any of this judicial notice nonsense. I don't do any of this. All I do is notice. I just put the thing on the top of it, notice. I don't notice court. I don't judicial notice. You get rid of all these adjectives and you get rid of all these adverbs. You just make it a simple one word, notice. So like they say, well, they say, are you a free man? It's like, no, I'm just a man. All I know is I'm a man. My mom told me I was a man. I believe her. Any other definition of that word, I have no clue where you're sourcing it from. And I'm not going to stand here for 11 more years trying to figure out where, what you mean by free man or sovereign man. or uh, And you're not going to diminish my capacity as a man. Because as far as I know, that the law of this land is uh, the man created the government. The government answers to the man. The man does not answer to the government. And it's like, well, you a citizen, I'm not even going down that path with them. I said, look. What does me being a citizen have to say with they kidnap my baby? Did you or did you not kidnap my baby? Well, are you a citizen? No, 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 no. I'm the prosecutor here. I'm the one moving this court. I'm the one who's asking the questions here. Do you have a claim against me? No. Well, then you're moving under my rules. And this is what everybody always gets in trouble with, too. Everybody always plays defendant. But like I say to people, if you're a defendant, you have to move under their rules. So like I say to people, what's a case? Thank God I etymologize this stuff. Case means a casing. Like a, like a sausage. You put all the meat and the ingredients in a sausage case. So you're the one who determines what is best for your case. He's like, well, let's put a little bologna, pepperoni, provolone. Let's make a nice case. And you say, well, for this sausage to taste really good, you've got to bake it at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. That's the rules. This is how it's going to play. This is how we're going to do it. So when people come in to court and they're the defendant, you're just a piece of their case. So when you try to say, well, I want to do it this way, they're like, no, 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 no. That's not how the ingredients are mixed, and that's not the rules of how this is going to taste good. No, no, no. What you're going to have to do, people, is you're going to have to stop coming in as a defendant because you have to play under their rules. So what you have to do is, like, say, oh, find out some things that they're missing. Like, is there a verified criminal complaint against me? No. Great. So now I'm going to make a claim against you that you're saying a crime was committed or that a wrong was done, but you're not bringing the injured party before the court. So to move court, you have to have a plaintiff. It, it's, it's an ancient rule. I don't know what, what it is off the top of my head, but the plaintiff must show up. The defendant doesn't have to show up, but the plaintiff must show up. His attorney could be there, but the plaintiff must be standing next to his attorney. The defendant could just have an it, the attorney show up. On. The defendant doesn't have to appear. But in, it's, it's an ancient rule. The plaintiff must show up because if you're claiming something like an old Bible thing, bearing false witness on your brother, and all of a sudden, you're the moving party. And then you don't show up. It's like, wait a second. You wanted us to chop his head off. You file a false claim. So now whatever you wished on your brother is going to come back on you. The plaintiff has to appear. Because if we find you file a false claim, whatever you wanted executed on your brother, whatever you demanded from your brother, we're going to demand it from you. And we might triple it or we might quadruple it. So you better not be filing a false claim here. So that's what I always tell people. Never come in as a defendant. No matter who charges you with something, unless it's a man. I never help people when it comes to if you injured your brother, if you injured your neighbor, a man, a flesh and blood woman, I say, good luck. You compensate him whatever he wants you to do. If you ain't got money, tell him to come over and rake his leaves, mow his lawn, wash his windows. But you better compensate him somehow because you done him wrong. But when it's the government or a, a county or a speeding ticket or something, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm filing a counterclaim against you. Why? Because you're not going to bring any injured party before this court. And since you're, want, uh, since you're saying that somebody's been done wrong, uh, and you better have the plaintiff. Because if you're not, you're filing a false claim. And I'm telling you, no plaintiff's going to show up. And I'll compensate the plaintiff now. Right now. You show me who the plaintiff is, and I'll give him money. And, but he's got to put his hand on a Bible and verify that I injured him. Well, the state says the state better put their hand on their Bible and better verify it. These are a massive card. They better put their hand on the Bible and verify it. Because That'll not, never that, happen, though. It'll never happen. So there you go. So you file a claim. Oh, believe me, my sister, it worked with her against Macy's credit card company, and it worked like a champ with her against a um, –